Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you a review and tutorial of the new Anastasia Soft Glam Palette. I'm also going to be comparing it to the Modern Renaissance Palette. So if you guys want to see the differences between both of these and how I created this look, then just keep on watching. Anastasia Soft Glam Palette is available on the Anastasia website for $42. That is where I purchased mine. And it's going to be online at Sephora and Ulta on March 6th and then in stores on March 10th. So this is the same price, the same amount of product as the Modern Renaissance Palette. You get 14 shades and it's 0.28 ounces total. In here you get nine matte shades and then three shimmer shades and then two metallic shades. So you get like five shimmer shades but they do have two different finishes. And I'm gonna go ahead and get right into swatches because we do have 14 shades and we do have some repeat shades with the Modern Renaissance Palette too. So I'll get into all of that. I'm gonna zoom you guys in and we'll start swatching all the shades. All right, so starting off with the first row row of shadows. The first one is Tempra. This is one that is also in the Modern Renaissance palette. Then the next shade is Glistening. This is one of the iridescent shimmer shades. And then next to that is Orange Soda, which is a lighter transition shade. The next shimmer shade is Rose Pink. And then we have the metallic shade Sultry. This is what's on my lid today. It is a bit of a chunkier consistency. And so is Bronze. This is the other metallic shade. Both of these have more fallout compared to the other shimmer shades. Then lastly in this row, we have the shade Mulberry, which is a darker burgundy matte shade. So that is everything in the first row. Moving into the second row, which has a lot of mattes. The first one is Dusty Rose, which is more of a cool tone, purpley tone. And then we have Fairy, which is another shimmer iridescent shade. And then Burnt Orange is another repeat from the Modern Renaissance palette. The next shade is one of my favorites. It's Sienna. It's another matte brown color. And then we have Rustic, which is a more cool tone brown shade. Then Cypress Umper, which is another repeat from the Modern Renaissance palette, a darker more neutral tone brown shade. Then lastly, we have a matte black shade noir, which is also really pigmented. So those are all the shades in the palette. They all swatch pretty pigmented. They all swatch just like the colors you see in the pan. They are very neutral shades, but you do get some variety with some of the different shimmer shades. And then also, of course, with the matte shades, you have some oranges, some browns, some purpley tones too. So we do have three repeats from the Modern Renaissance palette, Tempera, Burnt Orange, and Cypress Umber. So they're more of the neutral shades, um, transition shades, brow bone shades, not anything that's like a really standout shade. And if you guys wanna see a comparison, here are the two palettes. Mine is so used up in the Modern Renaissance palette. So of course they do look pretty similar. I'm gonna share swatches of both so you guys can see just the overall shade comparisons of both. Definitely they have very different undertones. It's still kind of in that same color family of more red tones, some purples, browns. But generally the undertones, there's a lot more neutral shades, more cool tone shades, especially in this half of my Modern Renaissance palette, which is not used as much <laughs> compared to the warmer half of the Modern Renaissance palette. And then in here, you basically get all warm tones. Rustic is a little bit more neutral and then Dusty Rose is a bit more cool tone, but basically everything else is pretty warm tones. And then other than the repeat shades, there are some shades that look similar to each other, especially some of the shimmer shades. A couple of the darker matte shades so I'm gonna swatch those side by side so you guys can see like the different undertones all right so here are some swatch comparisons they look really really similar but they do have slightly different undertones so here we have the soft glam side and you can see especially the shimmer shades they look pretty similar but the undertones are definitely different so they look really really similar but if you go to do an eye look with these shades versus these they will look a bit different especially with the undertone and then these three on top are completely the same so these are the repeat shades I wanted to swatch them just to show you guys that they are exactly the same shades, same color, same amount of pigmentation. So just those three are the repeats. That's why they look identical because they're the same shades. And then these bottom four are a little bit different. They look really similar, but they are just slightly different, especially in the undertones, warm versus more neutral and cool tones. So you guys can see what shades I'm talking about. It's um, 
Vermeer Primavera are the shimmers from the Modern Renaissance that are a little bit more icy and a little more cool tone. And then these are a bit more warm. And then Red Ochre from Modern Renaissance and Mulberry are kind of similar. And what was the other one? Dusty Rose from Soft Glam and Buen Fresco from Modern Renaissance. So if you guys want to see like what shades are similar, if you already use those shades a lot and you don't need a repeat or there's something you don't like about those shades and you want it to be maybe a little bit warmer, that way you guys can know how similar those shades are. But these are the shade comparisons. So you do have kind of like half similarities and then a whole lot more warm shades. So they do swatch pretty much the same. To me, they apply the same. The pigmentation is definitely there. The quality is definitely there. It is very, very pigmented. The whole palette is super pigmented. But I'm just gonna get into the tutorial so you guys can see how the shadows apply and how I got today's look. So I'm gonna start off in my crease with the shade Orange Soda, the lighter, warm tone. And then I'll probably mix in a bit of burnt orange on top. I'm going to carry this shade up pretty high. It is fairly light on me, so I'm going to bring it to just under my brow bone. And I'm just taking my same crease brush into Burnt Orange, and I'm going to apply that a bit more precisely in my crease and build that up mostly in my outer corner and blend it towards the center of my crease. And this is one of the shades that was a repeat from Modern Renaissance, and it was definitely one of my favorite transition shades. So I'm glad they also added it in this palette because it is warm, but it doesn't pull too orange, so it can go with any like lid color or any other color in this palette. I'm taking a denser crease brush, and I'm going to go in with the shade Sienna. And I'm just going to apply it the same way and just concentrate it more in my crease and not get it too high just to add a bit more dimension. And I am getting some fallout because I did pack that color onto my brush, but every time that I've used this palette, I've done my foundation and everything first, and it's not super intense fallout that like ruins my foundation and the rest of my face makeup. So it blends out in just like five seconds. I get a really intense crease. I just like packed it on and then did like two little sweeps onto my crease. And we're gonna move on to the lid color. I wanna go in with Sultry, this like bronzy purple shade, it's super metallic. I'm using a flat brush, I'm using it dry first. And then I might foil it a little bit with Fix Plus. I like to do this because I always wet my shadows, but I want you guys to see what it looks like in case you don't. Um, use anything to foil an eyeshadow. And this shade and the shade bronze are more metallic than the other shimmer shades. They do have like metallic flecks to them, so you're gonna get a little bit more fallout, but it does like stay well on my lid. It's not like big heavy chunks or anything but the other shades just apply a little bit more smooth. So this is the shadow so far with a dry brush. I'm going in with a little bit of Fix Plus to go over it. So the Fix Plus also adds a lot more dimension and like a pink shift to this color, which I really, really like. So I'm just adding a little bit of this burgundy shade Mulberry to the outer edge of my eye. I'm just blending it into my crease a little bit just for a tiny bit more depth. And then that is basically the whole eye look. And I'm adding a little bit of tempera to my brow bone in my inner corner, it is more of a matte shade that has like a nice sheen to it. It doesn't have like shimmer, which I really like. And this shade I think is almost all the way used up in my Modern Renaissance palette. So I'm happy to have this again because I used it so much. So I just added in a little bit of brown liner to my lower lash line. And then let's go in with Sienna with just a smudge brush and then probably one more darker shade just for the outer corner. I'm just adding a tiny bit of Cypress Umper more so in the outer edge of my eye just to darken it up slightly. And I want to add one more shade. It's going to be super, super subtle probably, but I'm just taking a pencil brush and the shade Rose Pink. I'm just going to add a tiny bit into my inner corner. And I'm going to take just a tiny dot of glistening. There we go. Since the pink was so subtle, you couldn't even tell. And I don't want it to be very noticeable. I don't want it to be like radiant or anything. I just want... A little extra highlight there 
in the inner corner. All right, so the eyeshadow is done. I just applied some mascara. I'm gonna toss on some lashes and then just finish up with this review. All right, so this is the completed look and it actually did not take very long at all. Every eye look I've done with this palette, it doesn't take much time at all. It just takes like minimal blending and the application is just super quickly because all of the shades blend together really seamlessly. I find that it's the same quality as Modern Renaissance. I do have the Subculture and the Prism palette. I do have reviews on those. I will link all of those in my description box. I have comparisons on them too if you guys want a little more information on those. But I do find that this is the same quality as the Modern Renaissance palette. When it comes to blending, it's super quick and easy. It is a little bit more of a powdery shadow and so is the Modern Renaissance palette. So when you do dip your brush into the product, you're gonna get a bit of fallout in your palette and then maybe a little bit on your face depending on how you apply your eyeshadow. Anytime you pack on eyeshadow, you will get some fallout, but it's nothing that's gonna ruin your makeup, at least on me. I've been doing my foundation routine and everything before um, my eyes and it hasn't ruin my makeup at all so that's not an issue that I have found and then also with the shimmer shades sultry which I'm wearing today and then bronze both of these you're gonna get a bit more fallout because they are more of like a chunky texture not chunky where you're gonna get a lot of fallout and it's not gonna stick to your lid but it is gonna give you a bit more fallout compared to these other shimmer shades because they are more satin and more of a smooth, consistent finish. So keep that in mind as well. You are gonna get a bit of fallout with some of the shades depending on how much eyeshadow you use, how you like to apply your shadows. And then I do have a little bit of a dent going on so far in Sienna, if you guys can tell. Just in a couple days, I've already hit a tiny dent in Sienna, and that's because I've been really, really applying that shade with just about every eye look I'm doing. So I'm sure that by summer, I will hit pan on some of these shades. And Anastasia palettes actually do have a lot less product, almost half the amount of product as some other palettes, like Too Faced, Tarte palettes. Overall, you do get less product than like Chocolate Bar palettes, Naked palettes. So if you do hit pan, that is another reason too, because there's actually less product in these palettes compared to some other popular palettes. So that's something to keep in mind, but I honestly don't mind because I definitely loved these shades so much. And I was actually about to repurchase a Modern Renaissance palette. I told you guys in a couple of my everyday makeup drawer videos that I really wanted to use up these shades and then just purchase a whole nother palette. But now I feel like I don't need to because I have the shades that I like a lot, the tones that I like a lot, and then tones that I enjoy more than those cool tones in this palette. So I definitely prefer this to the Modern Renaissance because I'm gonna be using every single shade in here I expect to probably hit pan on the whole palette by the end of the year maybe that will be a goal and then I could get another one for next year because I actually really really love this palette I've really enjoyed using it and if your modern renaissance palette kind of looks like mine where you use a lot of the warm tones and not so much the cool tones then I think you would really really love the soft glam palette if you're the opposite if you've hit pan or have dents in all of these and not so much in these, then probably just stick to the Modern Renaissance palette. So it just depends on what undertones you prefer, what colors you prefer, but the quality to me is pretty much identical, more so than the Subculture for sure, and even more so than the Prism palette because in the Prism palette you also have some shadow toppers and just different formulas, and here you do get some more consistent shadows. You do get those metallic shades that I don't think, yeah, we don't have in the Modern Renaissance palette but it's generally very similar concept very similar tones and then um, the formula is a lot more consistent between both palettes so overall I'm super happy with the palette every eye look I've done with this basically takes no time I've tried out a ton of different looks just to test out all the shades and just different eyeshadow shapes and everything like that with this palette to see how I like it and it's super quick and easy Every eye look that I've done, every eye look that's really intricate, really simple, cut crease, things like that, like it just doesn't take much time compared to some other palettes because you blend so quickly and easily. So if you guys are interested in the shades, interested in the palette, I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, guys, so that is everything for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. This is definitely going to be a palette you'll see me wearing a ton. I'm really loving it. I love the color schemes in here. So if you guys really like warm tones, neutral palettes, but still have a little bit variety and you can get smoky looks, 
very natural looks, everything in between. Definitely check this out if you're interested in it. I think you will really, really enjoy it. But that is everything for today's video. Definitely let me know if you're purchasing this palette in the comments down below. And if you guys liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll talk to you guys soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.